I have the keys to a 1971 Porsche 911 S Targa with a 2.2 liter air-cooled flat six. I'll be driving it and giving you my impressions. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. When the first 911 was launched, it wasn't perfect. The 2-liter air-cooled flat 6 was a jewel that produced 130 horsepower, a clear upgrade over the 356's flat 4. However, the relatively heavy flat 6 sitting behind the rear axle severely affected handling and Porsche tried everything to balance weight front to rear, including placing two heavy batteries at the very front of the car. By 1971, when this 911S Targa we're driving was sold, Porsche had mostly solved handling issues by making the engine block out of lightweight magnesium in 1968 and lengthening the wheelbase by two and a quarter inches in 1969. 1969 is also the year when Porsche divided the 911 line into T, E, and S models. Displacement was increased from 2 to 2.2 liters across the board in 1970, giving the small 6 much appreciated mid-range torque. While several 69 to 73 T's and E's have sold for less than $100,000 in 2023, it is much harder to find recent sale data for the 911S, and there are no 1971 911S's for sale in PCA's Mart. But a 911S typically sells for much more money than its T and E stablemates. According to Bring a Trailer, one 1971S coupe was bid to $210,000 in July 2022, and another sold for $185,000 in May 2022. Since 2020, S coupes have sold for between $100,000 and $200,000, depending on condition. A 71S Targa in original condition today would probably sell for between $125,000 and $175,000 based on past data and taking into account a cooling market. Why are 911Ss so desirable? That's because the S was the highest performance version of the long hood air-cooled 911. In 1971, the 2.2 liter made 180 horsepower compared to the E's 155, which was enough for a 2300 pound car to accelerate quite quickly. Paired with that screaming flat six, a dogleg 901 five-speed transmission with first down and to the left made the S feel even more like a race car. The Targa model differs from the coupe in that it has a removable top that can be stowed in the front trunk, giving drivers an experience that's close to a full convertibles. And with that, it's time to drive this 911S Targa owned by the Porsche Museum in Rhineland Palatinate, a beautiful German state with twisty two-lane roads that connect villages and vineyards that dot the countryside. All right, we are in a 1971 Porsche 911S Targa. This is the one with the 2.2 liters and about 180 horsepower uh, from the air-cooled flat six. Now, all right, there we go, got it on. Nice engine. Pardon my glasses fogging up here. Uh, so yeah. A 1971 911S Targa with a five speed transmission. Uh, this is a dog leg box, which means that it has first and down and to the left. Um, this was Porsche's highest performance car back in 1971 and through 1973 uh, until the Carrera RS came out. Um, and it had a peaky powertrain. Uh, what I'm noticing here with the 71 is that this dogleg transmission first is almost over by your thigh um, and then second of course is up uh, and to the center where a third usually would be in most modern cars. Um, what I'm noticing first off is that this steering wheel is super thin and it really contributes towards making this car feel like it is from the 70s even though I'm sure it is going to drive better than your average 1970s car would drive. Now, hopefully my glasses have cooled off a little bit here. They have, and I can put them back on. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, this is a very nice ride. This is on uh, classic style Michelin tires. 
uh, with lots of tread. Got about 3,000 RPM right now. We're gonna keep it nice and easy until this is warmed up a little bit. We're going about six minutes out and uh, six minutes back. Uh, I should mention here, we are in um, Germany in the Palatinate region, right near France is part, is part of Porsche's Heritage Drive experience. So we're experiencing these Porsche's Heritage through its cars and also through different historical sites in this region of Germany. So really easy car to drive once you get past the first gear being so far down and to the left. Make sure you're not in third. Very pleasant drive. The, the steering is so light. It's obviously unassisted, it being an earlier 911. Um, but it almost, it feels assisted in the sense that it's so nice and light. But unlike assisted steerings from this era, it's very, it has a lot of feel, feel and feedback in it. And wow, would you look at these, this view right here in Germany. Wow. So, yeah, you can tell we are on a old car with small or non-existent anti-roll bars. Not sure how this car works with its suspension setup. Here we are on this foggy road. Wow. So cruising at around 4,000 RPM right now. This ride is really good and the feedback through the wheel is quite amazing. Now, a lot of people said, uh, reviewers back in the day said the 911S, yes, it was the fastest around a racetrack and at full throttle, but it was a peaky engine compared to the 911E, which was the middle 911 of this era ahead of the T under the S. Um, so the S, peaky horsepower, not as much mid-range torque as the E. Although this S has plenty of mid-range torque in my opinion. Now let's try a downshift here. Oh, didn't rev it enough. Brakes feel nice. Let's rev it out. Get on the brakes again. Heel towing is not easy, so I had to drag the clutch a little bit there. The sound is amazing. The brakes feel good, nice firm pedal. Unassisted brakes, so you have to stand on them pretty hard. Wow. What a nice car. This honestly feels more modern than uh, a 911 usually does, uh, or I should say a car from this area usually does. Like, let's compare this to a um, early American car like this, and yeah, no way. Oh, man. Nice and easy to shift. Got that heel toe okay. So this is one of those cars where it likes to be driven hard. Um, that peaky engine likes to be revved. Those brakes likes to be stood on hard in order to get that heel toe downshift. So yeah, you're not gonna be puttering around, lightly dragging the brakes to a stop sign or stoplight to do a heel toe in this car. Wow, what really stands out is just how compliant and supple this car is. Um, suspension tuning, a newer car is obviously much stiffer, much less body roll due to all sorts of suspension improvements over the years. But what we have here is a car that leans into the turn and really gives you some feedback about what it's doing. All right, we are basically at our turnaround point here. So I'm gonna find a place to turn around and head back. Yeah, very nice, easy car to shift. The clutch pedal, very easy. You still have floor hinge pedals, so if you're not used to a car like this, it's a little bit different. Yeah, so this 901 gearbox uh, must be set up very well and in very nice condition due to how easy it seems to be shifting. Uh, either that or these gearboxes are just super nice, but 
I've definitely driven 915 gearboxes that have felt worse to me. Yeah, this car is one of those sort of skinny tires sort of cars. Now I'm gonna put this ND filter here on the camera because it's about to get a little brighter with the changing sun. Oh yeah, how nice is this? And look at that sunrise. Yeah, very nice car to drive. So what I'm getting from this is that the, the hype around these early long hood 911 S's is real. Um, wow, what a car. Didn't get that heel toe well because I didn't brake hard enough. Try it again, sort of. Yeah, so what I'm feeling here is that this is the kind of car that uh, does egg you to drive it faster and faster in order to master its quirks and just how they're set up. Now I'm in, I guess, fifth gear, no, fourth gear. <laughs> Dog legs are confusing. So fourth gear. Nope, that's fifth. Third, there we go. Yeah, so the shifting, uh, this 901, it shifts well, but it definitely has a little bit of a uh, weird um, left to right detent is kind of hard to find exactly where you need to be uh, going from fourth back to third. Then from third to second, nice and easy. And listen to that engine. Wow. Back in a second, very nice. Load up the tires a little bit. Yeah, pretty amazing car, this thing. Take it nice and easy here back into town. Slow down a little bit. Wow, never driven a 911S before. This is the first time for me. I've driven some early long hood 911s, um, but this is the first time in an S, and uh, wow, what a treat. Um, yeah, I can see why people love these cars. And to be honest, just having this Targa top is so nice on a morning like today when the weather is nice, and uh, not too hot. It'll be sunny. This is a car you want to wear some sunscreen in, just like a Cabriolet. And see, as I'm going over this cobblestone street, I feel like uh, this car is taking it better than some of the newer Porsches. You know, no doubt, thanks to the tall sidewall tires and the suspension tuning. All right. And here we are, time for the scorecard. Now I'm gonna try and get through this part a little bit quicker than usual, because we are on a schedule. Um, but uh, yeah, let's let's go with car show first. Um, it's a 911S, it's a long hood, uh, it's blue. Um, what more could you want from an early 911, especially if your color, uh, your favorite color is blue like mine. Um, uh, people love seeing these cars just like a, a 356 which are not super common. Um, they're special cars, they have that charm about them, and uh, people will like to check it out. Even though it's not the craziest car maybe you've ever seen or craziest Porsche, um, it's a really special one. And um, you know, the, the top of the line for 1971, as far as road Porsches were concerned. Um, so yeah, you bring this to a car show, people are gonna look, might not be, you know, it's not going to be the Carrera RS 2.7. So let's give this an eight and a half out of 10. Uh, for daily driving, um, you know, man, if I bought this in the uh, 70s. Um, I would definitely daily drive this. You know, um, this is a, one of those cars that's so supple, easy to drive. 
um, and comfortable that uh, you could do it quite easily. And it has the storage in the front and you know in the back seats. Um, nowadays, these cars are quite valuable. I'm going to assume this one is over a hundred thousand dollars, probably well over a hundred thousand um, dollars. And uh, yeah, a car like this, maybe you wouldn't want to daily drive it. So if you mix those two thoughts together, I'm going to call this a uh, seven and a half out of 10. This might be a one or two days to the office sort of daily driver. Uh, for road trip, not quite as much room as some of the newer cars, but you can get it done. Uh, you wouldn't be able to put a roof rack on this if you needed extra storage like on my Cayman over to Parade earlier this year. Um, so, but this is the kind of car you want to arrive in and have when you're at your destination on a road trip. So we'll call this a um, eight out of 10 for road trip. Uh, fun factor, I'm gonna give this a solid 8.75 because man, it's so easy to drive. You hear people talk about the clutch, you know, and the gas pedals and how they're floor hinged and et cetera, et cetera. And I felt none of that in this car. I've definitely driven harder to drive 911s. And plus, this is the sort of car where it wants you to drive it hard and you're gonna have to work up to that and it'll reward your hard work. So 8.75 for fun factor. Uh, thanks for watching. That's the end of my one mile review. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. It helps us uh, do these videos um, and helps us guide where the content you like to see goes. Uh, thanks again. Take it easy.